All things considered, being denied global entry is not the end of the world. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Lori and in this community, we aim to educate, motivate, and inspire each other in all things travel related. So if you love travel and lifestyle, because we dibble and dabble around here, then be sure to click on that red subscribe button. Be sure to give it a thumbs up if you learned something new from this video. And of course, sharing is caring. So share this video with other people you know who may be interested in similar content. So as you can see from the title, we're talking about Global Entry. If you don't know what Global Entry is, it is one of those trusted traveler programs that is provided or is administered by the CBP. So you can go to cbp.gov, the Customs and Border Patrol for the United States. I have shared with you multiple videos in the past, so I'll be sure to link those somewhere so that afterwards, if you're still not done watching, you can watch one of those videos following this one, of course. But it's one of those trusted traveler programs that helps to expedite you through the customs process when you're returning to the United States from your visit internationally. So it's basically something that you pay for, you go through a little bit more screening, but it's well worth it as far as I'm concerned. So let me share with you some of the reasons why you may not be admitted to the program or you may not be permitted to participate in the program. Now there are a number of reasons why someone may be denied and how do you even know that you're denied? Well, you go through the application process online, you send your information in, all of the requested materials. Again, those previous videos will show you exactly how to do so. I even have one walking you through step by step how to apply for global entry. But you send your information in, they send you a letter back in the mail or they send you something on email stating that you are not approved for global entry. So what do you do then? Well, they usually will tell you what is the reason for not being approved for global entry. So here are the following reasons why typically one is denied access to the global entry program. Number one is that you may have some convictions in your past or some questionable criminal history that may preclude you from being considered for the program. So you may want to review your record, make sure that perhaps someone hasn't stolen your identity, used your driver's license, for instance, during a traffic stop, and you have incurred a bench warrant or something for your arrest because of someone driving under the influence and using your name and your driver's license that you've lost somewhere along the line. It's a criminal act for them to do so, so you wanna make sure that you follow up and make sure that your record is cleared if that is the reason that they give you. Another possible reason for being denied is any possible immigration violations. So you may want to check your history again, make sure that you don't have any kinds of issues that may pop up that may flag you in the system that would have them then deny you inclusion in the program. Hopefully you have not overstayed your visa or you have not been deported recently and those are the kinds of things that are counted as immigration violations. Yet another reason you may need to deny global entry is customs violations. If you have a history of violating the agricultural rules, bringing foods back into the country that are on the do not import list, if you are known for not paying your duties, your taxes when you re-enter the country, any kinds of things like that, if there are any kinds of those customs violations, then more than likely that is the reason for your denial. Another reason I mentioned to you when you were filling out the application, when I was going through step-by-step -step process for how you fill out the application, is giving an incomplete application. Failing to fully complete your application or even offering questionable, <laughs> let's say questionable information. So if you have false or incomplete information, that can be yet another reason for your denial. 
If you have a current ongoing law enforcement investigation, whether you're under investigation for a crime, even if you have not been convicted of that crime, failure to pay your child support, misdemeanors and felonies both are considered. So if there is an ongoing case, if you are currently in some kind of legal entanglement, you may want to wait a while until that is resolved fully before applying for your rule of entry. Believe it or not, another reason why you, you may be denied is that you have insufficient ties to the United States. So if you're a permanent resident, if you are a naturalized citizen, myself, I'm a naturalized citizen, if you don't have sufficient ties to the country, I know one of the questions they asked me when I was going through my global entry interview was whether or not I had dual citizenship in any other countries, whether or not I had valid passports in any other countries. At the time, I did not. I said no, truthfully. And, um, you know, they look into your eyes like they're like they're a human lie detector to figure out if you're telling the truth. But that was one of the questions. And I figured that it was because they wanted to make sure that I had sufficient ties that if I traveled somewhere that I would indeed return or even that I had enough loyalties to the country. You know, it makes sense. Yet another reason is just simply the CBP's discretion. The individual doing the assessment may just decide that there is like some uncertainty there. There is too high a degree of risk concerned with you being given this global entry pass, you know, to just speed through security and have less screening than the typical individual coming back into the country. So they may want to just avoid any kinds of mishaps, but you may, you may appeal the decision if you have been denied. So hang on a second. By the way, if you are denied global entry, you do not get your application fee back because they had to go through the process of doing the background check on you and doing all of those things. That money was used because it was used for manpower, it was used for research, it was used for their investigation. So you know you do not get your money back. And I think I mentioned that in the how to apply video as well. Another reason why you may be denied global entry is because you were denied the purchase of a firearm. The federal agencies communicate across each other. So whether it's the ATF, the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosives and Customs and Border Patrol, they all communicate with each other. So this information will be communicated to them within amount of hours or days that you were denied the purchase of a firearm. read the letter that they send you, whether it's in the mail or via email, read that very carefully to see what the reason for denial is. And then you want to gather all of your supporting documents, make sure that you, again, go through the checklist, be meticulous about your record keeping, be meticulous about your record gathering so that you have all of the information where you need it. Your next step is then to write a reconsideration letter. So this is where you will explain why the denial is in fact an error. You will explain if you know there was a false address listed, if there was you know some kind of a mix up, if you have in fact reported that your ID was stolen, include the police report number, all of these things all of that supporting document, you will reference it in a very clear, honest, and concise reconsideration letter. Submit your supporting documents or copies of your supporting documents with your reconsideration letter. If your reconsideration letter is considered acceptable, they may in fact ask you to attend another interview. So on this interview, make sure that you bring again the supporting documents with you. Make sure that you're honest make sure that you are bright and cheery you know don't get defensive in the interview don't you know speak too much be concise they ask you a question answer only the question they ask you don't go on and on explaining things people who tend to uh explain a lot after ask a, after ask a question honestly from a behavioralist they're usually lying so that may be something that may trigger them you know with you so make sure that you stay calm and that you only give the answers necessary for the questions asked all things considered being denied global entry is not the end of the world there are still other programs you may be considered for tsa pre-check Century, Nexus, and if you want me to go into details about those others, I've given a few considerations throughout those other videos that I mentioned before, but if you want me to do a 
full comparison of all of the different programs, let me know down in the comments below. Thank you so very much for watching. If you found this video helpful, if you learned at least one new thing in this video, then please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it again with someone that you know who may be interested in this content or who may find it helpful. If you wish to see more videos like this, let me know and come back for more. If you're not done watching, I will leave links to other videos here and here. And of course, my little face that you can click on that is about subscribing to the channel. Again, thank you for watching. Remember to value experiences over things because travel is the only thing you buy that truly makes you richer. Ciao.